Happy New Year, everyone! Welcome to Day Day Knits. This is episode 20 and it is also the anniversary or birthday of this podcast. My name is Sara and I'm just super excited to be here. Um, it's been a month. Um, I don't know if you've watched Vlogmas or not, but it has been a month. Um, so here's what's going to happen today. Today is a very special episode. Um, first, I'm going to say who the winner of the 2021 Knit Along giveaway is. And I'm going to say what you're going to win and also the rules for entering the 2022 Knit Along. And then we'll go through the rest as usual. You know, what am I wearing? FOs, whips, cast-ons, all that great stuff. I will not tell you all the things that I have received or gifted to myself <laughs> since the beginning of the year. Um, but if I have time, I'll tell you about some of my resolutions and expectations and hopes for next year. So, first, I'd like to thank, and I wrote everyone's names down here, Magna, Alice, Soxy Nana, Rin, Susan, Emily, Sheila, and Sherry uh, for entering the knit-along. Okay, and the winner of this year's knit along, well last year's, 2021, is going to get not only one Rowan magazine, but a second one. Sock yarn from Yarnable, sock yarn from Yarnable, Yarn that is not for socks, but I guess you could give it a go. Um, this is both Isager, which is a rustic yarn that I really, really love. They're both tweeds. This one is in a purple, this one is a dark green, and this is Malabrigo, and it's one of the colors that I used to make. These are all colors that I used to make other projects before. And these are, you know, ones that I chose to give instead of, uh, you know, keep all of my yarnables. I thought I'd give some um, because I know some of you really, really love socks. And then inside, I'll just show you a few goodies. There's a puzzle with uh, the picture. The end picture is the yarn, which is this yarn. And these are four because I gifted the other two to two friends of mine that are starting knitting. But it's four samples of soak. Lots of cute stuff with llamas and tags. Well, not llamas, probably alpacas. I don't know. Um, lots of stuff with slots. There's uh, cute paper clips. There's a, a little zip pouch, which is this that you can see. So you can put like all of your markers and everything. One maker's notebook and maker's sti sticker. <laughs> and a, uh, I believe, faux leather pouch that I thought, you know, you can keep most of the goodies that are coming in here. And I'm keeping it all in the supermarket bag. Kroger. <laughs> and as soon as I reach out to the winner, and the winner uh, responds with their address, no matter wherever they are in the world, I will mail you this... Um, box of goodies. Well, it's not a bag, but it will become a box. In the meantime, uh, there is uh, quite the weather outside with lightning and everything, so if I lose uh, power, that's why. Um, I don't think you can hear the rain, but if there is thunder, you might hear that. I don't know. Sorry for all the noise. Okay. Alright, 
so I have, where are they? They're here. Okay. In the super cute new bag that I got for Christmas by Jezebel B. Oh, it's in French and it's from Quebec. Quebec? I don't know how you'd say that in English. Um, but I have here all the little papers that I cut from uh, Bingo with Caddy Jacks that has just ended. And let's see, who is it going to be? Okay, got a paper. Okay, this person has a brand new podcast, I believe with like seven episodes, uh, and they knit tens of socks, tens. If you go to the group on Ravelry, um, you will see what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, Rain. Uh, actually, did I thank you before? I think so, but I, don't, I can't remember. But the knitting Texan from the Lone Star State. Congratulations! Um, I mean, you had amazing chances because I, I think you had like, I don't know, I want to say like 20 projects. It was a lot. You're a huge knitter. Thank you so much for entering and thank you everyone else for entering. And I hope you decide to enter this year too. Okay, so if you're wondering what the rules are, um, in the link in the description of this video below, um, there will be uh, a description of the video with like different times of when I'm talking about different things so you can go back and forth but there will also be a link to a Ravelry group okay now in that Ravelry group you, you will be able to see I haven't created it yet but I will there will be a group for 2022 and in that group you just need to post a picture of your FO with uh, the name of the project and the designer. The FO must be something that is discussed in the podcast or, and this is a new rule, any of the projects that I have designed, which at this moment only two are out for sale, but hopefully by the end of the year I'll have like three more or something. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, and it has to be a project that you began or will begin and finish in the year of 2022. So to recap, go to the link, post a picture of your FO, say who the designer is and say who the, um, no, what the pattern is, has to be a project mentioned here or then by me at any point in time, I mean designed by me at any point in time, last year, this year, in the future. Um, and it has to be a project that began and finished in the year of 2022. And then at the beginning of 2023, I will be able to do a give the giveaway thing, you know, where I tell who the winner is. Okay, well, I hope that uh, you, Rin, are uh, very happy with it. <laughs> you had great chances and, I mean, you had amazing chances, so there you go. And I have my notes here, and okay. It's very simple to win, to win, to enter. <laughs> okay, for the what am I wearing, I'd like to start with something that I'm not wearing yet. But you just hold on. No, wait, that's not the way it is. Sorry, okay. What a mess, I can't see anything now without my glasses. Urgh. Okay, so this got fibers in my lips now. This is one of those super cute thick bandanas uh, that you wear to like cover your ears when it's cold outside, but you don't want to wear a hat either. I think it's super cute, and it is made by my friends Wanda Duarte who has just started knitting. Um, this 
is like her first or second project and I don't think it's like a um, pattern necessarily I think it's just something that her mother t taught her how to do it has cables y'all I mean it's the first thing she's knitting it has cables it's amazing it is amazing and I love it and she made it to match my Sorel, which was somewhere oh there it is I'm surrounded by knits guys okay she did it to match my Sorel. isn't that sweet oh my gosh I love it well she's amazing and I just wanted to support her uh, beginning as a knitter uh, I've told her that she needs to check out Ravelry. I mean, it is the Google of knitting and I hope that she keeps it up because she's like, I mean, really good. Wow. Anyway, so I don't need to keep wearing it because it's not that cold. It's cold enough to wear a turtleneck, but not that cold. Not inside at least. Okay, and this... It's my super, super, super duper cozy sweater by uh, Fable Knitwear and it's called the Sugar Plum, okay? And the model, like the pattern, the original pattern is all red. And this is, I think, in bulky weight and I think she wears mohair with it, which I will use the mohair with it, which I definitely am. I'm using a pink mohair, it's tin silk. Let's see, what is it called exactly? It is called Sandinus Garn, tin silk mohair in dark old pink, which is this one. I had exactly one left. I, I used either two or three in the making of this sweater, probably three. Okay, and for the rest, I used all yarn that I got myself as an advent gift. Uh, it was a bundle from Knit Picks and it is called Sli Simply Wool Bulky. And Simply Wool comes in two major colors. The warms and the cools. The cools are more gray and the warms are more in like brownish tones. Um, but they look very similar. If you just buy one of those, you're like, is this brown or is this gray? When you have all of them, then you can really tell the difference between the cooler ones and the warmer ones. And some of them are solid like that. And some of them are twisted with two of the colors. So I started with the darker one, darker brown. Then I went to a marled that has three colors. Then I went to a medium round, a uh, marled with two colors, a light brown, and then uh, this is just color work, and this is the white, but you know, it's not white white, because it has pink. This is Effie probably can tell I haven't blocked it yet. I'm just wearing it. I thought I was allergic to it because the first time I put it on, I just could not stop coughing. Now I can't stop talking. So completely different. But I was doing this while I was traveling. I started back home uh, while I was seeing my parents. <clears throat> and then in the airplane, I was like, well, I'm bored. I did all of this and I have to switch to white and I didn't want the white to start immediately. I want it just to be for the turtleneck. So, what I did, oh, and this is the kind that turned. Um, basically, I grabbed a photo of a dog that looked a lot like Effie from a profile. And I did, I did a snapshot of it with my phone. I drew a little grid and then I painted the grid to, you know, basically show the stitches. So you have a paw, a paw, the little tail back here, the arched back, the fluffy chest, the little snout, the little ear. 
but that's it and i also went with some bubbles i've never actually done a project with bubbles i've helped make a bubble before um i've helped my mother-in-law oh shoot i have not finished this i just realized <laughs> oh my gosh I thought I had finished it. No, I still have to close this. <sighs> okay, this is not an FO, I guess. But it is something that I am wearing. So there you go. Anyway, it was super fast. I love the sleeves. It's super cozy. It's just so warm. And I really like it. Now this is very open. I can pass my finger between these stitches. And I don't know why exactly that is. Also, this sweater is made from the bottom up. And one issue that I found with it is that, I mean, it tells me, it tells me how long to knit from here to the under arm. It tells me my, my size was the smallest, which was 46 centimeters. I don't think they have anything in inches. But the issue is with this. I made it longer than what it said. She said like 26, which is probably like around a foot, maybe. And I didn't know if it was going to end up being too cropped because I didn't know how much it was from here to there. And I didn't know how much it was from the bottom of the sweater to the top because she does, she does not say that anywhere in her pattern. So I didn't know if this was going to be up by my arm or further down, which it is. You sort of can tell from the pictures, but it's really helpful when you're trying to make something for yourself and trying it on is meaningless you know because you don't have the whole measurement anyway I made it extra long and now it works for normal sweaters and not just uh, normal jeans not just cropped okay this is normal this is cropped super cozy and I feel like one day if I have a baby I could carry the baby while wearing this it is um, very like uh, wide and comfortable and cozy so there you go and that's basically all I have to say about the sweater so next time it will be an FO but there will not be much to say okay other things FOs mm. One of them, I have no idea where it is, but I'll post a picture. It is the Contrast Tracer Brown I Jessie made. The whole thing, Jessie made, yes, Jessie made. The whole thing is ripping. I was okay with that. I am not a um, person that needs to knit a larger size. Um, I did do it a little bit longer than what it asks for in the pattern. Because I wanted something that I could wear like closer to a sports bra or extremely short cropped tank um, <clears throat> that I could wear. <clears throat> I'm probably allergic to this sweater. It's changing my whole voice. <clears throat> I'm hoping that when I block it, this will not happen. But okay, here we go. I don't have water with me. No, I don't. Okay, never mind. Moving on. Um, the contrast racer bra. I did it longer than that, what it needed to be. You can do it as long as you want. You can turn it into a tiny tank top. Not tiny, but you know, fitted tank top. Um, I wanted to wear it as a first layer if I were to go skiing or something like that, because it would be more comfortable for me than a sports bra or a normal bra and it would be also a warm underlayer to then put other layers above it also warm 
but you know start comfortable and warm perfect i ended up using it a lot um because um i finished it in time um i finished during my vacation and i could wear it on the airplane right back and there like all the time it was amazing um especially at the airport and on the airplane when it's cold <sighs> it was so comfortable especially like traveling doing a transatlantic flight it's a whole like 24 hour adventure so you want to be comfortable and i really was so there you go highly recommend it if you can stand all that ribbing uh, I thought it was easy, easy to follow, um, yes, so I would do it again if it were not for all the ribbing, I do not have fun doing that much ribbing, I don't think, but there you go, I really liked it, I might do another one, honestly I might, but not next year, uh, I'll take a little break off of that pattern, but I really, really, really like the end result. For something that is fitted, I mean, it really fitted me nicely. I'm really happy with it. It's also one that goes bottom up. Then you do one side, one side, and the back. Or first the back, and then one side, one side. Yeah, that's it. First you do the back, then you do one side, the other side, and then you try it on, and then you do we we'll figure out how much you need for the straps. That's it. <clears throat> and I also did, while I was on vacation, the hood dress mittens. I think I said that correctly. I might not. Um, oh, the other, the yarn for the contrast dress about was Magpie Fibers. And it was a, a really, really dark red, beautiful, but super wash. Super wash because I thought, you know, under layer, maybe some sweat or I don't know, it's right next to the skin and it's stretchy. So I thought, you know, that's a good idea. I can just throw it in the washer if it needs to. Yes. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Hulders Mittens by Inga. Inga from Nipping Traditions. I did it as a test knitter. Uh, I was doing it for myself. The main color was yellow um, because that's my favorite color. And then it had specks of pink and um, green. And it was all using Mondine. Uh, the Mondine, the green was the one that I used for my Eta socks, which are somewhere around here because, okay. All right. These are my Eta socks, and this is the green that I used, because I don't think you can tell through the photo. Then, this was the yellow, which is a mustard yellow. Not, like, my favorite is canary yellow, but it's a nice yellow too. All Mundi. And the pink was the main pink here on top. So I was doing them and I was in the living room making them because they were supposed to be, you know, I could help Inga being a test knitter, show them on the podcast, uh, and they would be great driving gloves because they're mittens and they're warm. And I, I drive an electric vehicle and it's an older one. So the mileage is very poor um, because it's like from seven years ago. It's a really old model for an electric vehicle, which means that I end up not turning the AC nor the heater. And it is now winter, it has snowed, there has been ice on my car, and I thought, you know what? Some mitts or mittens would be wonderful for when I'm driving, you know, cold steering wheel and all that. Instead of driving with one hand, with the other hand stuck between my legs. Um, Oh hair, sorry. Um, yeah, but so I was knitting them in the living room and my mom's sitting up opposite to me and she goes like, oh, what are, you, what are you making there? Oh, it's just this mint, you know, blah, blah, blah. Ah, well, they're very beautiful. 
He's like, okay. Do you want them? I was just like, sure. So there you go. Now they're with my mom. She really, really liked them. She's also really into all of those colors. <laughs> it goes with her, most of her wardrobe. So <laughs> there you go. And I'll just, mm, Joseph is making popcorn. Probably sharing with Effie too. Um, it is now all over the, the bedroom, that smell. Okay, anyway, moving on. They're really easy to do if you have never done mitts before. Um, they're really easy to follow. They come, I think, in five sizes. I did the smallest one and they were still a little bit big on me. I have very short hands. Um, so the part for the fingers finished where my pinky finishes and the part for the thumb went a little bit past the mid of the thumb. So I would have been very warm and cozy. But there you go. That's it. I don't have them. I might make another pair, but I don't like to make a pattern and then right after it to repeat it. So maybe for next winter. I do have lots of yarn that I can do with it. I think that in the pattern she suggests, um, she suggests a heavy fingering slash sport. Um, my lace, my gauge is very loose, just generally. So I went not only with a smaller number of needle size, but also thinner yarn. I went with light fingering. Mondi is a fingering that when you stretch, it, it really shows that it becomes light fingering. So that's what I went with. I really liked it. Also, they have very, very small color work. So if you've never done mittens, but you see, oh no, it has color work. Don't be intimidated by it. It's very, very easy. I promise. I mean, you if you don't want to do to start doing color work and your mitts at the same time. Okay. Um, but if you are adventurous enough, you know, it's not very hard. I'm sure you could do it if you really wanted to. And, and then I did, I did, you know, very, lots of Christmas presents. I did, what did I do? I did the vanilla summer splash socks uh, for um, Joseph's grandmother. This was since the beginning of December. Um, and I entered those for sock mess because there were leftovers of my Christmas colors, which I have here. There are these colors. One is just a full red. The other one is this super speckled. And they're from Cumberland Fiber Works. Uh, the yarn is called, pl no, not called. The type of yarn is play. And um, then the colors I can't remember. One was Jesus Lives. The other one was a Bible verse. And I cannot remember what it was. Um, so I did that. It was super easy. It took me probably, I want to say less than a week. Um, the vanilla summer splash stocks are a pattern that's very easy to knit you know it's shorties and it's a vanilla shorty the only time it has color work if you're doing the original ones is at the top with the corrugated rib uh, but in the pattern i suggest you know how to make it longer like those that i showed before but also you know you don't have to do this if you just want vanilla socks you know so there you go. And I also did, um, well, sort of the sugar plum, except for that. I'm just going to sew it. Um, you might have never seen this before. You might have only done the type of sweaters where you only have a little hole here and a little hole there. Um, but this basically, I'm going to shut it like that. And then I'm going to sew it like with a mattress stitch or something and that's it it's super easy it's gonna end up being very clean very nice <sighs> and i think that's it for no excuse me i've also done the simple house slippers for my friend juana that like i was her secret santa and she was my secret santa in our group of friends so that was unusual but it happened and so i did 
to for her the Simple House slippers and then the emerald cream because she loves jewel tones, especially greens. And she gifted me the little bandana thing. Okay, and now the whips. Next to me, and maybe I can show you, but it's a giant mess. I'll show you some, I think. Let's see. See that? Those are project bags. They either have whips or they have yarn that is ready to become a whip as soon as I finish the other whips. Okay, so let's start with something um, very easy and simple. The Plum by Junko Okamoto, which I'm doing with Meme 20. It has not changed. I have not touched it. I've only returned to the US like three days ago or four, four days ago. <coughs> I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to it. I'm hoping that when I wash it, I'll be less, have less of a reaction. But here it is. I'm doing the body. It's just knit, 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 knit. And then I want to do the ribbing more or less this size. And then the arms are going to have ribbing and cables. So I'm not necessarily looking forward to that. Um, but I do want to have it ready before the spring because I'd like to wear it this year, this spring. I want to wear it during the fall. Obviously it doesn't happen. I want to wear it in Portugal. I thought it would be warm enough and it will, you know what it was. It was really warm, but I had not finished it. Arr! So that's where we are with that one. The staple um, has not had much progress. I have not knitted on it since I arrived either. Oh, where's the front? I'm having a hard time finding the front. What on earth? Okay, I think that it's like this. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. The Staple by Park Williams. I'm using all scraps. So far, I'm using all fingering scraps. This sweater is, oh, and it's inside out, okay. This sweater is showing you the pearls. It's knits, it's all knits. I promise. This is, oh, and this is the front, okay. That's the front right there. This is the bulky weight sweater. I am using lots of just beautiful scraps and full skeins of yarn that I have, fingering. Um, <clears throat> Because, well, I just wanted to use all the things that I didn't know what to use with or stuff that I bought to make other patterns with, but still had lots left over or just a little left over. And I wanted to make a sweater that started in a really light and just went colorful and then dark. Not like dark as in black, but like, you know, start with the beige and go through grays and oranges and yellows and then end up in a really deep red if I can and I'm looking forward to work on it um, I did not take it with me I took four projects with me when I went on vacation so I could not work on it but it is really fast it is really fun and I know some of you have started those um, and well I am just enjoying working on it, except for the fact that I think I am only using um, super wash yarns, which are not my favorite to work with. I just, I don't love how it feels when you touch it. I prefer either something rustic or something that's just naturally soft, because I can honestly tell you, I can grab a yarn and be like, oh, this is super wash. 
it's just it feels different and when i knit it it sounds different too um i i feel like i can hear the plastic just rubbing each other i don't know it's weird i couldn't tell uh at the beginning when i first started knitting but then after i switched from rustic to superwash rustic to superwash then i was really able to start noticing those sort of little things um so those are two projects i have an I have 11 bags next to me, but I will only be talking about webs. Let's see, another web that has not had any change, but I'll just show you what it is, if you don't know already, because you might be new, or you might have forgotten, because it's been so long. But this is the coziest memory. It is a blanket, and I'm working on it, ideally um, one square a Sunday, that was the idea wearing chronological colors from basically the project that I finished. Um, I'm wearing from lace to worsted. I will not be using the bulk yarn on this. Um, it's super easy pattern. I really like it. Um, it's um, fun to like keep track of your projects. You know, when you finish it, you go back and you're like, oh, this is when I did this for Joseph, or when I did this for my mom, or, you know, oh, this is when I test knitted that, you know, that sort of thing. It's very fun. Um, ends up being um, completely random, the colors, because of that. Of course, you can choose not to do it chronologically, like I am, and just do it, you know, however you want, like all blues, all yellows, all monochrome colors, I don't know, whatever you want. It's very, very easy. And you don't have to sew anything. You pick up and then you knit the stitches, square after square. It is very easy. The project is by Camper Ray and I'm just using stash yarn. And that has not had anything done on it since uh, the end of November. So I have like five weeks to keep up with. <sighs> and now, I have started a pair of socks. Um, I have a group online, a Zoom group for knitting. And we did a secret Santa sort of thing. Not necessarily uh, for Christmas, but for um, just like a holiday gift swap. And I got amongst lots and lots of gifts i was i was gifted a lot of things beautiful things tasty things um but of yarn i got this gorgeous gorgeous neon it is a neon pink and it has like lots of like sprinkle colors um greens blues oranges yellows beautiful right and it's a sock yarn, it's super wash, it's light fingering. And I have started doing something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I don't, I mean, I know why I didn't, because it was new and unknown, and sometimes new and unknown things. New and unknown um, are scary and stressful, and you just can't think about it. I don't know if you can tell what this is. This is the beginning of a toe-up sock. Now, I know most people prefer a cuff-down sock. I have not finished the toe-up sock yet. This was my first one, but it's not my only one. Um, but it makes me think that a cuff-down is the same as this sweater, you know? You start from the bottom, well, with the sockets from the top, and then you work until where you know you need to end. You know you need to end at your toes. You know you need to end your sweater somewhere over your shoulders, because otherwise it might fall off, right? Um, but who knows if you're going to run out of yarn before, and then you never get to use all of your yarn. So, I decided I would do a practice run for toe-ups. 
I did not. I mean, I started the practice run and I was going to do a project from my book that was gifted to me by my mother-in-law, 52 weeks of socks. And I did pick a pattern, it is right there. And I will be knit knitting that pattern, mixing this with that. Looks kind of weird, I know. I might change my mind. I don't love exactly how they work. It's like disturbing and intriguing. Um, I might use white instead. But I chose this color because there are speckles of that color right there. But I also feel like they're somehow too similar, but also dissonant. That's what they are. I don't know if you know anything about music, but when you have two sounds that don't sound well, they're dissonant. And this makes me think when you have a key and then you play at the same time the key right next to it and it makes this like horrible sounding sound. Um, it's like, it's weird, they're like together, they should go well, right? But mm, they just don't mix like water and oil. They just don't mix well. So I might be changing that to yellow. And I said that this was a practice. Why was this a practice? Because for a little while, I've been wanting to do a project for toe up socks where I get to use the whole skein, all of it. That was my test run. In the meantime, I have a joint uh, knit along thing that started as a change, a exchange, a yarn exchange between a bunch of knitters to celebrate the 10 years, more here in my eyes, of a podcast, Portuguese podcast. Um, Pontinho Jovento is the podcast by, I believe her whole name is Maria João Duarte. I could be mistaken about something, but I do not think I am. Okay. So this group, what did we do? Each person that wanted to participate separated 10 colors, 10 grams each color and sent it to the person that does the podcast. And then that person received all of these skeins from all of these people. And when I say skeins, I mean, they're mini, mini skeins, they're 10 grams. And then she got them all together and she sent back to all those knitters, mini skeins from other knitters. So I got 10 mini skeins from 10 different people for a total of a hundred grams, right? To make a pair of socks. Well, I decided, you know, I'm gonna join, I'm gonna have a main color and to make sure I use all of it, I'm going to separate each one of them, those mini skeins into two. So I use the same quantity for each feet because um, I have a tiny like kitchen scale. So I just use that five grams here, five grams there. And I started a toe of sock. This skein I was using for my uh, staple, but I decided to snip it. And now I'll be joining a different color on the staple and I'm using this one to make the socks. I have started with the green. This is going to be a new pattern um, that I thought would be a great pattern for people making advents next year. Mm -hmm. And basically you mix your main color with all of the other colors. This pattern is gonna be called Out of Sorts, um, assuming that you know I get to finish it and put it out there, which I do want to. I did this last night and this morning. It's going really well. I've only used one of the colors though. So basically on this little bit, I probably have a total of 15 grams. So I'm thinking this sock is going to go up to my knees. And you know what that means? 
I think that that means that I'm going to be doing a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. So that whenever... This is an issue I have with socks. And this is why I don't wear socks up to my knees. But I have very large calves for the average size of my leg slash feet. Anyway, stuff that goes up to my knees usually has a hard time going past my cuff, calves, and then it becomes really uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to lift my leg in an awkward way. Oh, these are from Poland, by the way. I don't know if you have any Polish viewers, but my brother studied there in Erasmus, which is a um, European st uh, study abroad program, if you don't know what that is. Oh, I'm also wearing socks, wool socks, um, afterthought socks. Anyway, moving on. So he got me those and I'm gonna take them out just for the purpose of this conversation. So these are my caps. Um, once I'm here, there will be a chart that will tell me, okay, where is the widest part of my leg? It's here, here. And then how high it is, look, so how many rows do I have to knit? And also how wide does it get? So that I get increases down the back, hopefully it will work. And then slight decreases, ribbing, and I'm thinking some eyelets to tie a little bow. Just to make sure that those socks will stay secure right at knee level. I'm very excited with this. I've never had socks like that, but often I wish my socks went a little bit higher. It's just that either those socks don't stay up or they're way too tight and not comfortable. So that is what I'm going to do. I might need more than one main color. Um, but I'll figure that once I get there and I'll change to another color. But I'm really happy. So these are my out of sorts socks toe up. I think I might start making most of my socks toe up. And I suggest that you try. The cast on is way easier and you have to cast on less stitches. And then I just feel like it goes really, really, really fast. And you get to try it on as you go. So you know it will fit for sure. And you know that you will have enough yarn and you don't have to do toes in a different color if you don't want to because you'll know if you have enough yarn for all the things you need. I'm really looking forward to it. So, now I get to do my expectations and goals for 2022. It is such a cozy day, I really wanna have some tea. Anyway, all right. What I did today was I separated my projects. I have a list here for a year and a half of projects. I'll show you just real quick. I have my dates in orange. I have my projects and I have an arrow saying, oh, this one will take four weeks, three weeks, two weeks. Oh, this one will take like 18 weeks or something or 10 weeks or eight weeks. This and this I can do at the same time and that sort of thing. Just to keep myself organized. It's not written in stone. It's in pan, not erasable, but you know, I can sort things out. Especially since after I finished, I realized I forgot two or three projects. So, but I set up everything and the first like 11 projects have their own bag right now. And I want to show you just two more bags that I got. 
And at the same time, let me tell you, I only want to keep three projects going at the same time. Right now, I think I have like five or six, but I will narrow those down. So this was a present from my friend, Samantha. It says Yarn Boss, and it's one of those where you can put your skeins inside and thread them through the holes. I'm not sure I'll be doing that because, you know, the only way of finishing that is to finish that yarn or snip it. Uh, so you can't, you know, once you start it, you can't really remove it. And then it has like a really long strap so that you can carry it around. Um, and it has a place for your needles, a little pocket, and more pockets, and the zipper pocket. It's great. I really love this bag. It's super cute. And then another bag that I got, and this one's huge. And it has a huge project to go with it. Ah, it's my Hohi bag. It's big. Look at it. It's like, you could carry like seven of my heads in there, I'm sure. It's wide too. It's huge. And it has like 20 skeins inside. Lots of skeins, it's very heavy. Um, and so that's what I did. And those are the amount of projects I want to keep. I have like 20 resolutions and goals and things that I want to, to, to work towards. And last year I wanted to have two projects going at the same time. This year uh, I'm saying three. It will be three projects because I'll always have the blanket going as well. And this is because I don't want to be overwhelmed. I am going to go back to school twice a week. And I will also be a full-time worker for six months. I'm, I'm going to be doing this. And um, it's going to be a lot. I'm going to be doing nine, ten hour days. And I will be working on the weekends a little bit as well. So this means less time for knitting, less time for worrying about knits, less time for podcasting. Which takes us to some news. I will be keep doing the podcast, but I think that I might be going down to once a month again. I mean, other than the few hours that I might have here and there to move quickly on socks. I mean, I have sweaters, I have cardigans and shawls that I want to make. And there just won't be, I don't think, a lot of progress in two weeks. And there also will not be much time for filming or editing. So I will be going down to once a month for a few months and then we'll see. Probably going to go back to twice a week, but I don't know. It's exciting. It's scary. We'll see how it goes. There's a lot happening. I have a lot of projects in mind and another one of my goals is to publish three patterns this year because I have all these ideas either written down or I have bought the yarn but I have not started actually knitting this, so I have still have to see you know how things work but my autumn, aut ugh, autumnal embers <laughs> socks are out testing. Um, testing uh, stage is almost done. So I'm hoping that in February I might be able to have those out for everyone that wants to knit them. Uh, if you don't know what those are, they're color work socks. And I'll show you the color work in this one. There's a little flame at the bottom of the foot. Well, it takes up the whole top of the foot. And then the heel, you have a little wire. And everything else is practically one color, the other color, and so on. I really like it. I really like wearing these. 
um, they actually needed to go to the washer right now um, because since it's color work it makes it extra cozy and I don't know I really I had fun making them but um, I'm really really liking to wear them so I hope others will as well I'd like to thank everyone that has been purchasing and knitting my um, vanilla summer splash socks and my Eda socks. Uh, the first person that got them at the beginning of the year, I actually sent them a message. Um, yeah, it's fun. I'm, uh, I'm happy and hopefully this, you know, will make other people happy. Another thing that I will not be doing this year, up until October at least, is to buy yarn. I have enough yarn for like three or four sweaters and jackets, shawls, socks, hats, all the things. So for a little while I will not be getting any yarn. Uh, except for one project. If you saw last year, about almost a year ago, like 10 months ago, I did a vest for my father. It was a very like dark, dry green vest. The color was Toad. It was from Knitpix. It was not super wash. It was a vest for my father that was too big. So here, put it in the dryer, like 45 minutes or something. It shrank a tiny amount. So I thought, you know what? I'll just take it like this. If he likes it, if it fits, we'll just keep it like this. If it's still too big, I'll just put it in the dryer a little bit more. So that's what I did. It was a big mistake. It shrank so much in 10 minutes that I could have worn it. You could not see that there was any ribbing. There was no stitch definition. All the stitches were gone because the whole thing felt it. My father is very sweet and he is still wearing it, even though it doesn't even reach, reach his belt. So I took his measurements myself. I have those saved on my phone and I will be having to buy some new yarn and making it again. It is not a project that I thought was fun because it's two panels huge panels because he's a man and you know it's just knits on one side and just pearls on the other side there's not a lot happening it just feels very never ending but we'll see i'll make it work i'll make it happen i really want to give him something that i will not then ruin <sighs> so that's it. I hope you all had fun. I hope you all um, have nice expectations for 2022. You can see it's getting darker. It's still pouring out there. Hmm. I have some knitting to do. I have a heel to work on. And I have some dinner to make. So, I will see you at another time. You will see me at another time. Um, I hope you all had fun. I hope this year works out well for everyone. And I hope you have all the good knits and are cozy and happy and at peace with yourself and safe. Okay, all right then. I must say goodbye. This is it. Bye.